Hello darlings, Terry here. I know I'm about <laughs> two hours late. Uh, caught you all by surprise. Uh, decided to go late uh, uh, live. So um, yeah, I would have gone live at 12, but as is always the case, whenever you make plans to do something, something else comes up. Uh, so I had visitors um, and, uh, and now I haven't. So. Uh, there is someone watching, I don't know who, I'm guessing it's Brian. <laughs> no, it's Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Uh, thought it might, I can, oh, I can see a Brian there. I can see a Brian watching as well. Uh, hi guys, sorry, sorry I didn't have time to announce that. I wasn't going live at 12. Um, but again, just like last week, I didn't, um, I didn't prepare anything. I've been busy and stuff, um, but I just wanted to do a live um, because it's, uh, a bit less hassle, you know, it's just talking straight to thing. Um, I'm on Facebook as opposed to YouTube, but like last week, I'll probably edit this and put this onto YouTube anyway, just so I keep up the weekly videos as it were. And you join us here in the new kitchen of creation, which is what I used to call my last kitchen in my flat, the kitchen of creation. Uh, I am surrounded by knives and paint brushes and paper and glue and uh, stuff, because I'm making stuff. As you know, I'm always making stuff. Um, but I thought um, it would be nice to do, now I haven't got the, uh, the Marvin uh, thing is not, you know, desperate, you know, it's like three weeks to when it should have been finished, but that's not happening now. So it's probably, it's nice to actually sit down and just have a chat, you know, have a talk uh, about nothing in general um, and what's been going on rather than um, you know, the usual stuff about me, oh, I'm building this, I'm sanding this, I'm gluing this, I'm making that. What the heck is that on my table? Let's talk about current affairs at the moment. The, um, the COVID restrictions are supposed to be potentially uh, relaxed or done away with on the 19th of July. Um, they're going to decide on the 12th, apparently. Um, and uh, it's good because the 19th of July is my daughter's birthday, my eldest daughter, so that'd be nice. Um, and I'm in two minds now. I'm really in two minds because um, I will, you know, I, I've been wearing a mask out and trying to keep my distance and all that malarkey. I can see people watching. I see like little things there, so I don't know who they are. Um, but yeah, it's like I've been obeying the rules and all this malarkey. And I'm getting to the point now where Although I believe in science and I believe that, you know, this, the social distancing and wearing a mask and that is doing good and is the right thing to do, I am sick to death of it. Like a lot of people, like uh, lots of people, like you probably are as well. It's like, oh, when can we just get back to normal? And, you know, it's a silly way to think. If, if there are lives at risk, then maybe you should be a bit more sensible. But I've noticed a new thing now. Now the, the government has said, oh, you, uh, it's a chance that we can all go back to to normal soon. People don't want to. They're like, no, I'm keeping my mask on. Because A, if the government say it, it must be a lie. And uh, B, it's a case of, I don't trust the government to get anything right because um, knowing our luck, we'll all get together in a pub and stuff. And then um, it'll all go tits up and we'll all be, you know, be thousands of more deaths or something uh, from COVID. Um, and in fact, I learned just not 10 minutes ago that a local, I'd say local celebrity, um, back in the 80s, there was a, a heavy metal band from my era in Vargoid called Wild Pussy. It was that kind of band. And the lead singer, who went by the name of John Blood, that was his stage name, I can't, can't quite remember his real name, um, but he, he died not long ago because of COVID. How bizarre, you know? Um, yeah, so I don't know what to do. I mean, on the one hand, I want to say, sorry, if the government says, you know, we're not going to get prosecuted for wearing a mask in Noise Monarchy, then uh, I just want to go to the pub and like talk to people and all that kind of stuff and kind of get back to some normality because I'm sick to death of it. Um, but then again, I'm not a, a I'm not a, a science denier or a conspiracy theorist. Heck no. Um, so I want to do the right thing, but at the same time, you know, uh, like I said, I just had a visitor and technically I shouldn't have invited them in the house and we should have had masks on and we should have been talking outside at a two-meter, but it's like, no, sod it. 
Um, but I will say my visitor has a uh, lateral flow test every single day because of their job. So, I mean, that's more, more tests than I've had, um, but uh, there's definitely no chance of them having it. But what if I'm one of those carriers? Then I've obviously given it to them. Um, but anyway, uh, let's talk about my book. Monsters Next Door. I've uh, got to plug the book, obviously. Um, I have got literally, I think I counted up as about 13 copies left. 13 copies of the first run. That's it. Gone. Um, very chuffed about that. Haven't made uh, very much money out of it, right? I mean, to be honest, if, I, if this was someone else's book that I'd illustrated, I'd get more money from il illustrating a book once than trying to sell my own book. So why do I do it? Because I guess it's I guess it's like anything. Creative people have to do something creative all the time. So whether it's you know a musical thing or a, or a book thing or a, an acting thing or whatever, a film or anything, it's just you, we have to keep making stuff. Uh, otherwise, we go mad because we've got all these ideas popping into existence. Um, but um, we're probably going to do the Christmas edition of this now which will be the same story, same illustrations. Uh, it may be a little bit more red around the edges and some holly and things. Just tarted up the artwork a little bit for Christmas. Uh, it won't have all these names in the back. Uh, we may have a new set of names in the back to try and entice people to buy it. And it has worked on the first one, even though there are a bunch of people, there's about 20 people who have got their kids or their, you know, their dedicated children's names in the back there and haven't bought a copy. Which is doubly silly because A, why would you claim a name in the back and then not show the kid, look, there's a book with your name in the back. And B, what happens is it, um, it takes a slot and a, a space for someone else's dedication who would have bought the book to show that it takes a slot away from them. It just, I don't understand it. Um, and if they don't pick them up now, it, within the next, like, how many copies did I say I had left? 15 or something, I can't remember. Uh, if once these are gone, they've missed out. That's it, you know. Um, if they want the name in another one, um, I just had a message. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, basically, um, you know, they're gonna have to, if you want a name in the Christmas edition, if you want to get your a dedication in the, in, the, in the back, you know, of a, of a kiddie's name, a loved one's name, whatever in the back, you have to buy the book in advance. You have to pre-order because people take the Michael. Um, I have, there are people who have got six names in here and only bought one copy, which, you know, it's not like I want six times the money. It's more like if you're going to take the Michael and put six names of kids in there and then buy one copy and tell them to share it, it's a bit tight, especially as there's five other people who could have had their names in and would have bought five copies of the book because we've got to make the money back. We've got to make the costs, you know, like I said, I'm not getting rich out of it. Anyway, um, as regards a follow-up, I've already got a title, a story, and seven of the verses, because, you know, there's like a four-line four, four line verse in every, on every page. I've, I've written seven of the verses already, so that should be good. I think it might be for a slightly older audience than this one. Not, you know, not grown-ups, but, you know, slightly older kids. Just, I'm, and I'm not even going to let anything on. We've got to sell some more of these first. Uh, yeah, so I just had a message of someone, uh, you might have noticed on social media um, that I recently made a uh, birthday present for a friend of mine, uh, and it's a statue of a Border Collie, a dog, and um, I will completely admit I didn't uh, make the sculpt it from scratch. Uh, there is a video on, on my YouTube channel now where I bought the statue, uh, it's, a, it's a basic um, you know, statue of a Border Collie that's been painted to look like bronze, even though it's like polystone resin, which is a kind of plastic. Uh, it's very heavy, it's like two kilos. Um, but I got this Border Collie because it looked vaguely like the dog I was trying to uh, emulate. So what I did was re-sculpted the face, put some modeling clay and milliput and all sorts of stuff to make it look more like the dog in question, whose name was Cooper, Cooper with a K. Uh, he passed away two years ago around this time. Uh, sadly, uh, I got to meet him twice, actually, once as a puppy, once as a bit more of a grown-up. And he was a great dog, um, but he suffered from canine epilepsy, which finally got the better of him. And he passed away two years ago. So he, uh, uh, my friend who, who owns Cooper, uh, owned, owned Cooper, owned? 
looked after Cooper, um, was really hit hard and misses him more than I think any of her other dogs. Uh, and she has many. Um, and so I thought it might be nice for her to have like a little little statuette of him because he doesn't, you know, apart from photos, there's not no other things really. So uh, I went and got this Border Collie statue and I primed it, um, cleaned it up a little bit because there were some air bubbles and, and rough areas on there. Uh, rough areas on there, see what I did. And um, I re-sculpted the face to look more like him because he had certain uh, distinctive features about his face that made him look more like him and uh, I made a tiny pair of red goggles for him because he used to wear goggles because of an, uh, uh, a sensitivity to light in one eye. So I did all that and you'll see it on the YouTube channel anyway and it went down uh, as well as expected. Um, I got it hand delivered yesterday. I wasn't going to put it in the post. It might have broke. You know, they would have kicked it or something or dropped it. Um, so I, I got it delivered yesterday and I did get a message, uh, a, a very short message uh, of the uh, recipient in floods of tears, which was, you know, obviously I don't like to make people cry, but it, there were like, it was, as you said, in a good way. It was tears of joy kind of thing, you know, emotional. Um, so I'm glad that went down well. Um, and the thing is, Lots of people have commented on it, and the message I just that just popped up said that loads of people have commented on it, and that's great. And then someone said, "Oh, Terry doesn't want to take orders on these, does he?" And I replied with, "No, sorry, I don't." And the reason why is because when someone says, "Oh, do you want to take orders?" on the, firstly you think, "Oh, there's an opportunity," but it dawned on me that they couldn't afford me. I know it sounds stuck up or whatever, but they, did, they couldn't really afford me because the amount of time, money, because it did actually cost me money, uh, time, money and labour that went into that, I'd have to price it up at quite high. And unless someone wants to pay uh, a rate for, I don't know, a solid, a solid week's work uh, on top of all the costs and everything else, it would be a price level that unless you've got you know, unless you've got an appreciation for someone's physical hard work, because I had to get use hundreds of photos to copy the exact um, brown and white patches on the dog to make it look exactly like the dog, as well as re-sculpting his face. So, um, no, while it sounds like a good idea, oh, buy, buy statuettes and repaint them as people's dogs. It's not as easy as that. I mean, anyone can do that. You can go to eBay and buy a, a statue of an animal, a dog or a cat or whatever, and repaint it to look like your dog or cat. Uh, fine, and you can do that yourself. Um, but if you want me to do it, uh, to look exactly like your uh, dog or cat or whoever, um, that would cost a lot of money. Um, so I, I don't think people would be willing to pay me for the amount of work. Hi, Chris, I see Chris Lynch. Um, so yes, uh, again, it's it's a one-off, and I'm not I'm not into the uh, the pet recreation business because uh, a it it was a it was a, a one-off uh, thoughtful kind of special gift, um, but at the same time, uh, it's not something that's quantifiable. It's too expensive to kind of do as a, as a business kind of thing. Um, plus. As you know, I've got other stuff to do. I've got a Marvin and I've got a Dalek. Robin Thomas said, hi, Robin. Marcel. Oh, my goodness, Marcel. We were just talking about you. <laughs> uh, I pulled out my um, my shoebox, which is marked the Hitler Diaries, which doesn't contain... It contains my diaries from all the way back to 1988. Um, and 1988 was when I met my mate Marcel, uh, who was known back in those days as Fraz. I don't know if he still is. Uh, when we were both on YTS doing uh, video camera and editing and photography. Uh, so we had a big chat about that, me and my visitor, uh, and, and you, you came into it, Marcel. Oh, those were the days, eh? Yeah, good old days. Ah, uh, good old days. <sighs> Not all good. But uh, as, as Marcel, as I was just saying, uh, my visitor just told me that uh, the lead singer of Wild Pussy passed away not too long ago due to COVID. So that was a bit of a shock. Blimey. Anyway, uh, what next? Um, so yeah, I talked about my book and stuff. Um, yeah, I've still got still got Marvin stuff to do. I've got um, the Dalek. I'm really excited about the Dalek. I was going to do a show and tell of what I've been making for the Dalek already, but a lot of it's upstairs, so I can't really run away and do that now. 
Um, but what's everyone else's plans? Because if they announce on the 12th that um, uh, COVID cases are down to a level where the 19th says you can do away with the one meter, the two meter distance and the masks and everything else indoors. But what's your plans? Are you going to go ahead with it? Are you going to keep wearing masks and do distancing? Uh, don't get me wrong. Social distancing has actually reminded me how nice it is to not have people bump into you in the street. Everyone's like, oh, you're giving you a respective, respectful distance, much like they do when you go to Finland. People are just generally polite and will move out of your way. You don't get that around here. You really don't. That's why I love Finland. And I should be going to Finland in like three weeks and it's not happening. So a bit pissed off about that. But I'll be going to Finland next year. If at all possible, I say start saving um, because of the Batman thing. Uh, you work in a bank, it will be bedlam. Well, I don't know how, obviously I'm not having worked in a bank, I don't know how bedlam it's going to be or, or why. Um, but again, there's, people will be, if they're not social distancing, I, I guess they'll all just pile in, you know. So I guess that's what you're thinking, right? They'll just pile in and not really queue or anything, where before everyone's queuing outdoors at two metres apart. Uh, there's a lot to be said for people just being sensible and queuing properly and being a bit more respectful to, you know, a fellow man. Um, sorry, I keep watching my, uh, my pet sparrows out here. I've got uh, lots of sparrows. There's at least seven sparrows who live in two locations in my garden. Uh, and I, I start regularly buying um, feed. Emma, hi Emma, how are you doing? Yes, they will pile into the banks, yes. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, uh, I've got sparrows. I had five magpies this morning uh, fighting over the bird seed. Uh, sparrows love tortillas, I'm not tortillas, and they love rich tea biscuits. So I mean, flinging tortillas and rich tea biscuits out there. And they're beginning to kind of come closer and closer. Um, the other day, on this very table, I put a tiny piece of biscuit just inside the window and obviously I went away and I came back. Frozen peas! Birds love frozen peas! Oh, I'll have to try that. Which I shouldn't imagine them liking the frozen because they obviously rock hard. I think they prefer peas that were actually soft. Anyway, um, they do like wet bread and wet um, biscuits and that because that way they get moisture as well as dry stuff. I mean, they, obviously they like bird seed. But I put water down for them and I see them like having a drink. Um, but they do like, um, you know, the tortillas because they're a bit gooey and they, they're light and they can pick them up and they can fly back to nests with big chunks of tortilla. Uh, that's good. I can see them out there. Um, and yesterday I spotted uh, a rat. Um, don't shudder. Don't freak out. I literally thought it was a mouse. He was like that big. Tiny little thing. Came out of the hole in the wall, uh, in the garden wall. So again, it's not an infestation, it's not a big scary killer Stephen King rat, it's just a little mousy sized rat and he's not hurting me and I'm not going to hurt him and so far he's, he's evaded the, the cat that visits me who I've nicknamed either Schizophrenia uh, because of the way he loves me one minute and hates me the next um, or Hissing Sid because he likes to come in and hissing. We have magpies, they're the mafia of the bird family. No, well, yeah, I know because they're all wearing... Um, ma uh, ma um, magpies seem to be wearing you know the suits and stuff but I think I think they're like the killer whales they're black and white they've got blue in them they've got green in them they're super intelligent um, give me a magpie over a bloody seagull any day uh, sparrows are cute we've got um, some light brown ones and we've got some dark ones I don't know nothing about birds really <laughs> either variety let's face it um, but the ones with the black faces and black chests, they seem to be a lot more uh, braver and a lot kind of uh, smarter than the light brown ones. Light brown ones are always a bit jumpy, a bit nervous, a bit reluctant to come closer. But the, the black ones, the black faced ones are, yeah, then, uh, well, they're not afraid of anything. Um, uh, seagulls can get stuff. Uh, I don't like seagulls. I get occasional pigeons pop in. Um, they're a bit dumb. Uh, you can put food right next to them and they'll walk around going, where's the food? Where's the food? Because they're stupid. Uh, they sit on the fence and shout at the dog. Magpies. Yeah, magpies are cool. Uh, I love magpies. Uh, there was a story. Now, I'm, I'm not saying this is 100% true, but I was always told by my parents, by my mum, that uh, my grandfather had a magpie um, that was sort of tamed 
and uh, was in a cage, lived in the house with him, and he could talk like a parrot. Um, but she also said something quite disturbing where they got the magpie, forced his beak open, and split his tongue uh, thusly with scissors into like, you know, like pierced people have their tongues split. Um, and that's what in, uh, enabled the, the, the magpie to form words. I've got no idea if that's uh, a common thing, a known thing, and yeah, uh, apparently this magpie could repeat words really well after he had his tongue split, which uh, I, I, don't, I don't advocate cruelty to any animal like that. I'm not, I'm not a huge, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a huge animal lover. I mean, I don't have pets. And I think because I like animals, <laughs> I like most animals, it, that's why I don't have pets. Because if I had a pet, I would probably neglect them due to my own life anyway. It's like people say, well, I'm not gonna have a baby because I'm too selfish. I've got my own life to live and I don't want to, you know, have to look after a baby. And so it was better to not have a baby than have a baby that's not loved, if you know what I mean? So that's probably why I haven't got a cat or a dog, but then I've got the birds that come and go, not the female kind, <laughs> the feathered kind that come and go, and I've got the cat that comes in here whinges a bit until I feed him and then he hisses and occasionally has a go at me. So never seen a cat do that before. So that's fine. That, that's, that's my pet requirements dealt with. Birds to look at, uh, cat to occasionally feed and pet and that's it. So um, yeah, uh, the workload I've been doing, the massive workload uh, is beginning to ease off. Um, what have we got a message here? We have two who are trying to make a nest behind next door's sky dish, which they are failing. It's covered in sticks and God knows what, as they can't get the balance right. And every, sorry, it doesn't, yeah, the thing hasn't completely come up. And every night they huddle together on the sky dish. Oh, be nice when we get the carpets in. I can tune in. I wonder if sky dishes are warm. Is there any, any electricity going through them? Probably not. No, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I love magpies. Um, it's a, it's a little bit superstition, and I you know again like horoscopes. I don't put a lot of stock in any superstitions or horoscopes, but you can't help you can't help you know re if you've been reading horoscopes all your life, you just go through it and go, Ooh, what's my star say today or whatever. So yes, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't hurt. It's not harmful. Um, and this kind of leads me into on Sunday when I had the. Uh, 40 minute chat with a born again Christian just in the streets. Uh, he parked up his car and came across the road and said, can I have a word? And um, I don't mind, you know, I'm, I'm not one of these people who's like, oh, tell him to F off, give him some grief, give him a wind up. Why? They're just still, you know, everyone, we're just people, you know, there's no, there's no need to be a dick. I live my life by the holy rule of don't be a dick. Or I try not to be a dick anyway. So I'm not going to have a go at someone just because they want to talk to me about religion. Uh, I know where I stand and uh, he, he found out that I'm quite clued up in my beliefs and uh, my lack of beliefs. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we agreed to disagree at the end of the day. And I said, that's the best you can hope for. Uh, I don't see why uh, anyone, um, I mean, I can see why someone would recommend a religion, whatever that religion is. I can see why someone who is part of that religion uh, would want to share that with other people and recommend that other people do that. But you can't make me. Uh, same as I can't make someone with religious beliefs not be religious. And I'm not gonna go out there uh, like this guy did uh, on a regular basis and talk people out of religion. Um, I'm a kind of live and let live guy. I'm actually a live and let die guy, which I have been watching this week. Uh, love James Bond films. Love Roger Moore films. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to go too far into the religion thing, but suffice to say, I just said, look, it's a case of if you need religion to make you a better person, because he, he said that becoming, after four years of becoming a born again Christian, his life has changed so much for the better. I was like, cool, good for you. But I will tell you that in the last four or five years, my life has changed immeasurably for the better. I've gone from suicidal and clinically depressed uh, to getting all that joy back. 
and there was no holy books or deities involved. You know, it's, it is positive mental attitude, it's partially luck, it's friends, it's whatever you want to call it. But um, if you subscribe to a religion, whatever that is, and it makes you feel good about yourself and it makes you feel loved or uh, more positive about life and it gives you some sort of framework in which you can uh, live your life daily and go, right, well, you know, um, I'm, I'm being watched from above and I'm being, um, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Good God. <coughs> See how I said good God then? Hardwired from when you were a kid. Um, and saying, Jeebus Cripes, and all stuff like that. So there you go. Um, so, um, yeah, if, if you have a religion in your life and that is beneficial to you, good for you. However, I would say, you've got this T-shirt of you. Jeff O, how's it going? Yeah, this was a... This was a, a, a a mystery pack of five t-shirts and four of them were shit. No, sorry, three of them were shit and this was the only other good one. One was a Marvel Ant-Man and the Wasp t-shirt and this is a Power Rangers Megazord or something. And I was gonna throw it, but it's got robots on it, so you know. Anyway, um, yeah, so again, you know, if you, if you have uh, whatever gets you through the day, oh, that, why, what are you doing, Jeff? You're sending me pictures. Megazord. Now, I'm not majorly into Power Rangers, but I do like robots, as you know. I've got a massive collection of robots. So, um, I don't know if I can see your photo, Jeff, if you're going to send me a picture right now while I'm chatting. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, just to finish that up. If somebody comes up to me and says, I found heroin and cocaine have changed my life for the better. I'm like, good for you, dude. You do you, but don't ask me to do it, you know. Uh, I know that's quite unlikely. No, I'm not sending a pic, okay. Um, but then, you know, if you found Satanism, if you found rock and roll, if you found being into Morris dancing, stay the hell away from me. Uh, but yeah, whatever works, dude, whatever works. Um, the one thing that kind of got me a little bit, ugh, a cinematic, a schematic of the Lenin Falcon, I think I've got that one as well. In fact, I had two of them, black and white ones, and uh, I ended up sending, I, I didn't need to keep two, so I think the one went to a charity shop. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, the, the one thing that made me a little bit yeah. is when he said to me, I was driving down the street and I saw you going for a walk. In fact, I passed you twice, and then I thought, I'll pull up and talk to this guy. Which, of course I do, Jeff, of course. Well, why would I not? Um, but it, 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 that was a little bit kind of, and he tried to make out that was fate or something. That was like kind of, oh, it's destined that we, we, we would talk. I'm like, not really, because you don't know anything about me. I could have gone, screw you, and punched him in the face and run away, you know, or whatever. Um, or I could have just got turned into someone's front and gone into someone's house and you, that's it. But it's a, it felt a bit curb crawly. I drove around the block twice and saw you twice and decided to stop you on the third lap. I'm like, Okay. Uh, on the plus side, um, I do occasionally like to talk to uh, religious, um, what's the word, canvassers, evangelists, pros proselytizers, um, salesmen, um, because again, I don't like to be a dick. If I've got time to chat, I will. Um, but I do make it very clear from the beginning that I know why you're talking to me and you need to know that I am uh, a quite a a uh, died in the wall atheist and um i do i uh, i'm it's not it's not very likely that you're going to get me to change in my mind uh he did say well i'm going to just i'm hoping to leave a stone in your shoe um yeah i mean you you say you've got a couple of old friends there that have found god um was he behind the sofa was he down the back of the settee was he kind of Lost without a GPS? Where have you found God? Uh, yeah, I know what I mean. I'm being, I'm being facetious. But no, um, and again, I said, well, you know, you're not probably gonna, not going to get me to change my my views. Um, um, and But it, I felt it a bit strange. Super happy people. Uh, and apparently people with faith live longer. Well, I, I've got no data on that. So I can't say yes and I can't say no. Um, 
But it, if if they feel they're living longer because of uh, faith, great. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of answers to that, to be honest. I'm not even going to go into it. Um, but no, it's um, uh, the guy. The guy did try and say to me that you know he he he's found God. I tell them I have my own God. He says, "Yeah, booze." No, I'm joking. Probably a uh, sci-fi. It's probably Yoda, isn't it? <laughs> For you, Jeff, at least. Um, no. So, um, was it Boba Fett? No. The um, he he was trying to tell me that you know um, I haven't really thought it through, um, but he was in his twenties and I'm in my early fifties, and I'm like I've thought it through a bit longer than you have. You know, um, but again, uh, his his whole thing was to spread the word, and my my whole thing was to say thanks but no thanks. So that's how that panned out. We did talk about everything under the sun, every possible arguing point or or um, bone of contention. I we talked about. We covered every single one, and generally the conversation went. He says this. I answer him with that and he goes, okay, let's talk about something else instead. And I say, okay, I answer that. Okay, let's talk about something else instead. And we kept moving through them like crazy. Anyway, it is a stunning day. Oh, I, just before I, I go off that subject, as I said in my status, my Facebook update the other day, uh, we, talk, we got onto prayer and he talked about sometimes the answers are from above. And as he pointed, massive dollop of seagull shit went on the floor Missed him by inches. It was further, it was closer to him than me, but right between us, bang! And I was like, "Hey, from above, the wicked will receive the just rewards." Uh, if it landed on his perfectly quaffed vanilla ice hair, I would have had to laugh. I know it's not fair, but I still would have found it funny. Anyway, as anyone would, if it landed on me, he would have found it funny. Going, "Ha ha! That's what you get, atheist. God has sent the holy poop." onto your atheist head. <sighs> Very Monty Python. Anyway, what's next? Uh, yes, the summer of our, of our discontent. Uh, finally got the garden under control. Um, me and Wells got out there with strimmer each, like the mild stallions, and <clears throat> completely cleaned the garden out. Uh, looks really nice. And maybe, maybe people can come over now. We can do the whole garden party barbecue type thing. That would be nice. Mind you, I said that for five years at my last flat and nobody came around for a barbie. Um, what are you saying now? Reminds me of a time I was caught up in a chat with an Irish gentleman who claimed to be a psychic. I can tell the future after a few beers. <laughs> uh, uh, I, do you know what? I remember, right? I was, I was seeing a girl who was very into her psychic stuff and, and spooky stuff and all that. And she said, I'm going to pick you up. We're going to Blackwood and we're going to a psychic fair. Okay. And, you know, they're selling crystals and, and uh, uh, incense and all sorts of, you know, crystal balls and all that malarkey. And honestly, right, this is no, this is not a pun. It's, it's a, it makes a great joke. It makes a great little cartoon if I drew it out. But this is the absolute truth. We got to the grounds of the place in Blackwood and the sign was up there. There was like a sandwich board that said, Psychic fair cancelled due to unforeseen circumstances. I know that sounds like I'm twisting the truth, but honestly, that's exactly what it said. Cancelled due to unforeseen circumstances, which is, you can't make that. Stuff. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So I hope that one joke at least, and it's not a joke that I created. That's, that's a true story. And I hope that at least brought smile to your face on this Quite overcast Tuesday. It's threatening to be sunny one minute and threatening to rain the next. And I want to get out the back while there's no, sh you know, there's no washing out there. I want to set fire to a load of, uh, what have we got here? I was trying to get out of my car and he was trying to sell me a psychic session. What he hadn't seen was the dog poop he'd stood in. Didn't see that coming, mate. Exactly! Exactly! There is always going to be, no matter how airtight your, your defence is, there's always going to be something that's going to, uh, ironically, uh, put the kibosh on you, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I've got um, a lot of garden waste out there, like sticks and trees and bushes and stuff and grass that um, I could do with setting fire to because it's, it's all within concrete, so there's no, no chance of the, you know stuff going mad. 
and I want to get out there and, and light some fires. But it's all wet now. We've had a few nights of rain, so it's all going to just be smoky and get on everyone's nerves. But the second it dries up and gets sunny and ready to burn, all the washing is going to be out next door, so I can't win really. Um, the government guidelines, the council guidelines say you can have a fire, there's no, nothing stopping you from lighting a fire in your garden um, as long as you, uh, the smoke doesn't become a nuisance, you know, and there's no chance of you setting fire to next door's garden, you know, which there isn't. Uh, so who knows, maybe, maybe I'll try and light something later on, but uh, um, I do have to get back to my, my huge uh, number of jobs to do. Um, like I said, I'm, I've, I've broken the back of it now. I've got a lot of stuff done last weekend, so I'm, I'm getting on top of all that. Just do it, Tanks. I know, I'm a twisted fire starter, isn't it? Um, maybe I will. Um, talking to us, Jeff, before you go, you work with Tomb Boom, right? I need to talk to you about that. I need to talk to you about, I need, I need, um, I may need to employ an animator for Tomb Boom, okay? Uh, an animator or two. Anyway, we should talk later. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I've managed to get quite a work done. People need to incinerate things. I know, people do need to incinerate things. So many bodies tend to pile up otherwise. I, I, don't, know if, I don't know if any of you know, but I used to live within walking distance of uh, the top um, sad action, Maya. God, well, go and find some Tomb Boom people then. Oh, wrong skill set, Jeff. <laughs> Didn't teach us that in college, so what was the point? Um, no, I was saying um, I used to live within walking distance of uh, one of Britain's most notorious serial killers, Dennis Nilsson, at the time he was doing all his killings. Um, he wasn't interested in children my age, thank goodness, uh, but my dad knew his, uh, his upstairs uh, uh, neighbours who said there's a weirdo out the back having bonfires at all hours of the day and night. Um, you won't come and party, Jeff. You always say that. I haven't seen you for decades. Um, it's true, though. Um, life gets in the way. Um, but yeah, no, the, um, the serial killer was, was, was burning bodies. Um, and the neighbours hated it because they could smell burning rubber because he was throwing a tyre on top. This is all in his, um, his biography, uh, Killing for Company. Uh, Dennis loved burning stuff. <laughs> Um, and uh, he threw a tire on top, so you know the the stench of burning rubber would uh, would cover up the stench of burning people. So yeah, you know, uh, so this is why people don't come round. They're scared I'm going to chuck them on a bonfire in the back of the garden, and I wouldn't do that. Well, I might not do that. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys and gals. Um, it's been fun. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't done a proper edited video. Life's a bit chaotic, but I like, I like doing the sit and talk ones, it's quite nice. And uh, hopefully see you all when things uh, slowly crawl back to some kind of normality, whatever that may be. Uh, we can all, I mean, I, next door to my house is a house, so next door to that house is a big pub. So, hey, there's a pub there, there's always, there's always something in the wine rack, uh, the kettle's always on, so feel free to come around. Um, and I got a decent garden now. Nice, biggish, private garden. It's all good. Stuff to do. Anyway, I will, uh, I will see you all next week for a live uh, or for an edited video. I know not which. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, this weekend, uh, I will be getting into the fiberglassing. <laughs> I'll be getting into the, the fiberglasses. I know I have an, an old face, you mean. You can see your old face, old bean. Um, I'll be getting into fiberglassing with the Dalek, so I'm, I might capture some of that on vid, so you'll see that on Tuesday. Uh, you may even see it on Saturday if I get bored. And uh, we, will, we will take it from there. So, anyway, thanks for watching, people. I'm going to end this video now, and uh, I will catch you very soon on social medias and ting. So, take care now, and bye-bye.